Man. Yo. <laughs> Yo. Have you guys noticed in my past videos I made Lakers versus Clippers? They seem to be playing um, can you top this? If you want this guy, I take this guy from you. And the Clippers seem to be always ahead, a step ahead of, of the Lakers, right? And the Lakers wanted Marcus Morris. Clippers step in and tuck him, all right? They pulled a mini version of what Kawhi Leonard did to the Lakers. Um, and recently, there was reports that Darren Collison wanted to come out of retirement. And um, Lakers wanted him, right? So the, here come the Clippers. Oh, we had take him. You know, we had waived space from um, Isaiah Thomas. We had one guy left on the roster. We had put Darren Collison in here. All right? So, <laughs> with that being said, Darren Collison recently just said, I don't want to come out of retirement. I'm good. You know? So, the Lakers wasted all that time trying to woo Darren, Darren Collison to come to the Lakers. All right? So, that's another failed attempt. I think Lakers are probably... The uh, most desperate team in the NBA when it comes to trying to land players. They seem to be picking up all the leftover pieces that nobody want, you know. Um, but they let a lot of good players just slip out of slip due to cracks. Now, here's a perfect example. Lance Stevenson, a guy that played on the Lakers last year, is available. Okay, but you're going to let him slip. You're not going to even take him. I bet you the Lakers not going to take him. They probably take J.R. Spiff. All right. Now, Lance Stevenson could get his own shot off. Um, had that whole Staples Center, um, you know, making them dance, Lance, you know. He was a good fan favorite, right? But <laughs> the Lakers won't get him. They probably they sign uh, J.R. Smith, uh, Jeremy Lin before they sign Lance Stevenson. And Lance Stevenson is a perfect fit, right? Now that the Clippers are fully prepared on a perimeter, they got enough enough players to go after LeBron now. So, LeBron is going to get worn out because he's, he's going to need some help. Only guy you got that could play good perimeter um, offense, not even defense, is Kyle Kuzma. But you're going to need another, another guy that could come in there and get his own shot off and get some buckets. That's Lance Stevenson. So, why aren't the Lakers picking up this guy? You know, they're going to let him slip through the clack, cracks, right? You know, <laughs> this is so funny. I think, and also I said this in my other videos, nobody wants to come to the Lakers. And part of the reason is because LeBron is on his team. And it's not LeBron's fault. It's the fact that his media fanboys make it worse. You got guys like Shannon Sharp, Chris Broussard, they all over. Oh, I guarantee you. Guaranteed. <laughs> Darren is coming. He was at the Lakers game. He coming to the Lakers. You know, every time these guys are rumored to come to be part of the Lakers uh, franchise, the Clippers come and steal them. <laughs> I just think this is this is funny. Um, the Clippers is not only outplaying the Lakers on the court; they playing they outplaying the Lakers off the court as well. Um, <laughs> this is so funny. Um, so now. The Lakers are scrambling for the pieces because they know they are the ones that need to compete with the Clippers more than the Clippers need to compete with them. Clippers beat them, waxed them two times already. The Lakers know, LeBron knows, you know, and the whole team knows that they need more to get past that Clippers team because they don't got enough perimeter players to beat that Clippers team, you know. So who better than Lance Stevenson, right? But they, they, they're not going to pick Lance Stevenson. They're going to get somebody stupid like J.R. Smith. And J.R. Smith don't care. He, he'll, be the scape, he'll be the scapegoat because if the Lakers lose, you're going to put all the fault on the role players, and you're going to let LeBron and AD slide because you want to keep a, AD. So you're not going to put any blame on him until next season comes. Then you have somebody to blame. You know, if he's under contract, he would have got some blame right now. But the fact that Lakers are playing it safe because they don't want to put no blame on Anthony Davis because they want to resign him. All right. So this leaves us with a situation. Can the Lakers get past the Clippers? I said a million times. No, they don't have enough. 
But if you put Lance Stevenson on that team, it could at least even it out. Okay, you could at least sit there and say, hey, you know, they have a, a fighting chance, so to speak. You know, um, I think the Lakers, if they could get lucky and get DeMarcus Cousins to come back from this injury, and he could give you that 16 points a game, which would most likely be um, really hard to do because he had to be the fourth option, so to speak. And that means less touches. You Keep in mind, there's only one basketball. So a guy like Marcus Morris is not going to get that much touches playing on the Clippers team. He's not going to average 18, 19 points a game on this Clippers team because you got Marcus Harrell, you got Lou Williams, you got Paul George, you got Kawhi Leonard. That's four guys in double digits right there. So the fifth guy in double digit is going to be um, Marcus Morris. That means l lack of shots. He may get like eight shots a game. You know, only time he's going to get shine is when um, Kawhi Leonard's missing games or something like that. Um, so this leaves us with the most desperate team <laughs> in the NBA, the team that seems to be begging everybody to come to their team, but can't land nobody. You know, people don't want to be LeBron's scapegoat, you know. And this is part of this is the um, LeBron fanboys and his media support. That's why I said LeBron should get on this and be like, you know, you guys got to stop, you know, making me seem like I'm God and nothing. I could do nothing wrong. You know, it's a shame how these guys like Nick Wright, Chris Boussard and Shannon Sharp, they willing to point the finger at everybody besides LeBron. You know, when you lose, it's a team effort. So even if you are the superstar and you averaging such and such a game, you're part of the reason why that team loses. You're part of the team reason why that team wins. All right? You can't have it both ways. You can't get all the credit when you win, but get none of the credit when you lose. It don't go that way. You know? When Kobe was taking the L's, um, he couldn't get the Lakers over the hunt when Shaq left for a couple years after that. He was taking heat, and rightfully so. He was supposed to, you know? When Jordan couldn't get get past the first round and all this other stuff, couldn't get past Detroit, he was taking heat. Rightfully so, right? Yeah, he get credit when you win. So if you want to be the man, you want to be the number one, you're going to have to take, you're going to have to take a bulk of the credit on both ends of the floor, negative and positive. Um, I'll leave it at that. Um. If some of you, uh, I get, I live in Los Angeles, so I, this is why I'm talking about this because you know I hear a lot of people making comments and complaining about it. So, if you're a Lakers fan, what you think the Lakers need to get over the hump to beat the Clippers? Because I still say they don't have enough to beat the Clippers. But what do you think? Comment, like, subscribe if you want to. If you don't, oh well. Peace.